described the girth of transportation since the early 1900s. What is mathematical about its girth? Hi, I'm Ardeth Williams, pilot and air traffic controller with the Federal Aviation Administration. Back in 1903, there was only one aircraft. Not much need for us to have an air traffic control system. However, by 1960, there were over 78,000 commercial and general aviation aircraft. And in 10 years, by the year 2010, we believe there'll be almost 228,000. Air traffic is growing and growing. We anticipate by the year 2010, almost 1 billion people will be traveling by air. The year 2003 begins century number two of aviation. I hope in 10 years or so, you will be one of the visionaries that will ensure my safe and efficient flight by designing, building, maintaining, controlling, or flying the aircraft. The future of aviation is in your hands. You know, Ardeth is right. Mathematical concepts are everywhere, and they help us explain the world we live in using a system of numbers. For example, remember when Ardeth used a bar graph to explain the growth in the number of airplanes since the Wright brothers? Well, get this. We can also create a graph to show the growth of all types of transportation, from cars to planes to jets to future aircraft. Look closely at this graph. Can you see a pattern? Patterns like the growth of transportation are everywhere. You just have to look around. Speaking of patterns, a man by the name of Fibonacci discovered a very famous pattern of numbers a long time ago in Italy. This pattern of numbers is called the Fibonacci sequence, and the ratio of certain numbers in the sequence is so special, it's called the golden ratio. Hey, how would you like to meet an expert on Fibonacci? He's also a poet. Hi everybody, this is Bud Brown talking to you from the Math Emporium at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Virginia. The Emporium is a large room with over 500 computers where students can come day or night to learn about math. And speaking of learning, here's a little verse I've written about a man called Fibonacci. How many ancestors do we have? That number is easily found. For we all have two parents, four grands, and eight greats. Just double the previous round. But the family tree of the honeybee is not like any other. The girls, good and bad, have a mom and a dad, but each boy has only a mother. It's true, each drone has a mom alone, but each female has parents, too. In addition, you see, she has grandparents three, one fewer than me or you. And sakes alive, great-grandparents five. That's even true for the queen. And next, twice great, that number is eight. And of thrice greats, she has 13. Now she's asking us, don't make a fuss, to do this calculation. How many ancestors does she have in every generation? So hop to it, folks. Let's crack no jokes. Don't stop for meals or for slumber. Just work your mind. The answer you'll find is a Fibonacci number. And now, to help you learn more about Fibonacci numbers, here's Jennifer. Before we begin the student activity, let's learn a little more about the golden ratio and Fibonacci. Fibonacci? Fibonacci was a 13th century Italian mathematician who was studying a rabbit problem. He wanted to know how many rabbits he would have at the end of the year if he started with only one pair of newborn rabbits. Fibonacci knew that newborns are able to breed after one month, then every month after, if the conditions were right. He found that the sequence 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on, demonstrated the total number of rabbit pairs at the end of each month. So at the end of the first month, you have the original pair of newborn rabbits. At the end of the second month, you still have the original pair because it took a month for them to become old enough to breed. At the end of the third month, you will have two pairs of rabbits, the original pair and their newborn pair. At the end of the fourth month, you have the original pair, their first pair, born the third month and their newborn pair, born the fourth month. Following this sequence, at the end of month 12, you'll have 144 pairs of rabbits. Fibonacci and others soon found this sequence occurring in many other things in nature. By counting the spirals of pine cones, pineapples, and sunflower seed heads, for example, you can find neighboring pairs of Fibonacci numbers. The way in which leaves are arranged on a stem also displays a Fibonacci relationship. So do the spirals found in seashells. 
Now, Fibonacci wasn't the only one who was fascinated with these numbers. The ratio obtained by successive terms in the sequence was thought by the ancient Egyptians and Greeks to be special. It was so pleasing that they used this special ratio to design their pyramids, their temples, and buildings. You know the Parthenon? That's a great example of what has come to be known as the Golden Ratio or Golden Proportion. Here's the Fibonacci sequence. Let's see if you can determine the operation used and find the next four terms. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. If you guessed 21, 34, 55, and 89 are the next four terms, you're right. How did you get it? The ratio of certain pairs of numbers in the Fibonacci sequence is used to describe things in nature. 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 8, 8 to 13, 13 to 21. If you divide the denominator of each ratio by its numerator, the results look like this. The ratios begin to get close to the rounded number 1.62. What if you divide the small number in the pair by the large number? Well, you'll get 0.62 rounded. If something in nature can be described using the ratios in the Fibonacci sequence, well then, it's said to be golden.